Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and ohio, everybody. What is going on? It is Gail Wright here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Memoria Freeze video. And today, we're going to take a step back from all the challenge videos, all the unit showcases and discussions. And today, we're going to talk about my thoughts on the first part of the 6th anniversary. Furthermore, I want to also talk about the part 2 and part 3 celebrations of the 6th anniversary and my expectations for them. Of course, with the interview with the Mori Sensei and the Danmimo development team, my expectations have gone up a little bit. And then finally, I also want to clear up some misconceptions about what is going to happen to Danmimo after the 6th anniversary. Because a lot of people are saying some things that are completely false and absolutely misjudging what's going to be happening after the 6th anniversary. So today, we're going to talk about all of that and more so of course if you guys want to enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more danmachi and danmachi memoria freeze content and let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on the sixth anniversary so far and how are you guys feeling are you guys happy with it unhappy with it do you guys think something should have been done better let me know in the comment section down below i'm very curious to see what you guys have to say down below now while this is going on and while i'm talking about everything reg uh, regarding the anniversary and all i'm going to be doing some seven zone stages so obviously some gameplay will be going on in the background because i haven't done my seven zone stages yet so let's let it play out and i'm going to start talking about my thoughts on the first part of the sixth anniversary first and foremost now to kick things off i want to talk about the story really quickly because i feel like the story is the easiest easiest thing to talk about right now when it comes to the sixth anniversary right and in my personal opinion i think they did a great job with the sword oratoria 12 story of course we'll talk a bit about sword oratoria 12 versus them doing something else would that have been better is sword oratoria 12 fine now i'll give you guys my thoughts on that in just a moment but in terms of just generally talking about sword oratoria 12 and what they have done with the story and their voice acting and everything it's been great honestly it has been super super enjoyable i of course recorded and live streamed my reaction to the story live on stream so you guys can go and check it out of course right but it was a blast it was an absolute joy to you know read the story and also listen to the voice actors perform right um it was absolutely fantastic and for me i think that's what sells dan mimo and that is what dan mimo is in a nutshell it's them telling the stories of dan machi be it stuff that's already been in the light novels or be it something that's completely original written by amori sensei either way it's just a joy to be able to read and experience the stories of dan machi and especially when it's voiced because we know that at this moment in time we'll have to wait and see what the announcement is on friday for uh dan machi's 10th project for the 10th anniversary right but we know that sword oratoria is never going to get an anime at this point in time at this point in time we are pretty confident in the fact that you know the production team don't have faith in a you know sword oratoria anime so being able to experience you know sword oratoria through dan mimo and be able to experience the voice acting through dan mimo when we can't experience it through the anime it's absolutely fantastic so for me i absolutely adored it now of course one of the issues i had with the story was that not much had changed right we obviously got a little bit of dialogue and a couple of additional uh pieces of lore of course that connected obviously sword oratoria and don machi to things like astraea record and stuff which made a lot of sense of course right and then of course we got the uh, additional scene of the battle armor and everything but beyond that there were not many changes from the source material to the actual game adaptation now of course they even mentioned that in the exclusive interview with amori sensei and the danmio development team that part one didn't change that much but part two and part three are going to have some drastic additions and changes so i'm very much looking forward to that and i'm going to talk about that in my expectations for part two and part three now when it comes to the units for part one i know a lot of people were relatively disappointed with the units in part one uh, let's be realistic about this and let's not beat around the bush because i know a lot of people were disappointed about the part one units because they were nowhere near similar in power level to the units that are on the field right now in seven zone here right the fifth anniversary units were far and away superior and even now with the introduction of the sixth anniversary part one units you could argue that the fifth anniversary units are still better and to be quite honest being real about it and of course talking about uh, about the units from experience from the last six years of playing this game um well five and a half years for of course players on na but nearly six years of playing this game experiencing every single anniversary that has come out honestly 
the fifth anniversary was a huge anomaly i'm not even joking like the fifth anniversary was probably the biggest anomaly when it came to unit strength these units were just unbelievably overtuned there is no doubt about it none of the anniversary units that we've had in other anniversaries even lasted the whole year until the anniversary they would get power crept within like six seven months whereas units from the fifth anniversary are still good to this day which is insane it is genuinely the case in which where the fifth anniversary units are just absolutely overtuned because if you look at the sixth anniversary units they are good if you look at bet right if the fifth anniversary units weren't this overtuned right if you take a look at bet right he is absolutely fantastic of course you have the likes of barrier on him he's able, able to re reduce the opponent's agility he's able to strip away any debuffs he gives himself p res m res he is very good in his own right but the issue is right with the fifth anniversary units being so strong and so overtuned and then furthermore on top of that with the introduction of hero festa units these anniversary units don't feel as exciting and as strong as the units that have come before it which has become a little bit of a problem furthermore in my personal opinion and this is my personal opinion even though i love the fact that we only have to summon for two units per banner right now i genuinely think that's also been a bit of a detraction to be quite honest because now we're in a point where we want well we we want units that go well alongside eyes and bed but there's no options there. There is literally no options. I thankfully got something with Haruhime and Lily, who I am also including as part of the part one banners, of course, right? But still, it doesn't change the fact that we didn't get the support necessary for eyes or bet in those banners. If you take a look at last year or previous years, right? We had Alize and Artie. We had, you know, of course, last year we had, you know, Fianna, Helga, and Melia. All three together were phenomenal for war games. Immediately, they made a huge impact in war games. Whereas the units this year, I mean, it's a little bit of a struggle to build a team for them. Of course, there are teams being built, especially for eyes, but it's a very specific team and it's requiring you units from previous banners that have come out there's no unit on this banner outside of haruhime that you're going to introduce for that ice team potentially right so it becomes a little bit of a problem there as well where you know the units are strong but you can't really maximize their performance because we don't have the units to run alongside them again it's a bit of a problem i think of you know missing out on potentially having an extra assist and an extra adventure in the part one banners unfortunately that is the case of course I do think part two and potentially part three will have units that will help eyes or bet but right now we're in a position where eyes and bet are not in the best spot purely because well one their predecessors from the previous anniversary as well as the hero festas are just far and away superior and then of course when it comes to eyes you have to have a very specific niche team to get her going unfortunately so it becomes a little bit of a problem there right it becomes a little bit of a problem there um so we'll have to wait and see on how that evolves of course over time with the upcoming parts am i going to change my mind on the part one banners we'll have to wait and see of course but yes part one in terms of the story and banner those are my thoughts and of course now let's talk about generally the anniversary outside of that in terms of iris rewards and everything so i think it's fine honestly the way they've been giving out the iris and everything the login bonus we've had a three-week login bonus basically a little bit more than a three-week login bonus if i'm not mistaken of course right um i think we still have another six or seven days to go basically so it's been a little bit over three week uh a little bit over three weeks of a login bonus uh which is absolutely fine i know some people are like well there's not gonna be a login bonus after a week and a half well the reason behind them doing a login bonus like this is so that basically if people miss out on a couple of days or something they can can come back and get it until obviously part two begins basically so i think it's absolutely fine there are so many anniversaries where there's not even a proper login bonus and if there is one it's a week long looking at you genshin impact and fgo as well um so in my personal opinion i think you know danmimo handles the anniversary rewards relatively well we have the social media campaigns we have the anniversary uh login bonus we had the day one login bonus of them giving a thousand iris as well which was great as well um in terms of events now part one is always a bit lackluster in terms of events and we're feeling it right now right um we only have war games and record buster going on right now this week we will be getting familiar rush right but there's no like hard difficulty content right like we usually get at uh some point in the anniversary 
Now, that's the thing, though. These hard types of content, the Final Trial, the Grand War, and all that jazz, will probably come out in part three of the anniversary. So we're going to have to wait until then to get some interesting, difficult PvE content. And until then, we're going to have to work with what we're getting in terms of PvP, PvE content, and of course, some familiar content as well. That is exactly how Dan Mimo's anniversaries operate. And since that's no different, I my personal thoughts on it is no different as well. Now, one of the key things I fear uh, is a problem with this anniversary in particular and one of the things i noticed with part one of the anniversary in my personal opinion has been a little bit on a the marketing side and b the gameplay side of things of course i know that bet has a barrier ability which is of course the first time a non-hero festa unit has gotten a barrier ability which is brilliant but it's not a new mechanic necessarily, nor is it changing much at all. Because, of course, units like uh, Bell, Ryu, Astraeus, and Otaral have barriers already, right? Alize and, uh, Alize and Alan are the only ones that don't have barriers. But Bet is the other unit to have a barrier. But that doesn't change much of the gameplay. And I think that's also something that people don't really like that much, unfortunately. Is the lack of something new and fresh to play with. Something new and fresh to test out. Of course, last year we had additional actions on special arts for the first time, right? Um, the year before that, in the fourth anniversary, we had instant effects come out for the first time and stuff, right? And then, of course, in the third anniversary, additional actions was a brand new thing. And then in the second anniversary, it was Hero Ascension and stuff. So, of course, there was always something brand new. And, of course, I think this year, I guess, barriers were supposed to be the new thing. Uh, until, well, it wasn't because of the fact of Hero Festas. But, who knows? Maybe they'll have something to introduce in Part 2 and Part 3. I guess that is a small expectation of mine from Part 2. But I think Part 1 lacked that. I think that is what lacked in Part 1 the most is just lack of something new and fresh when it comes to the uh, uh, game in all honesty. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the pro promotion side of things, the uh, marketing. I think doing the interviews with uh, Dengenki online and everything was great and all, um, but I feel like maybe they've missed out a little bit on some of the other things as well. Like, for example, um, where's the music video, Don Machi? Uh, Shadow, uh, we were supposed to get a video on Shadow potentially, we didn't get that if I'm not mistaken, the English channel doesn't have it, usually they upload the music video or just the music OST of the theme song on their YouTube channel on the English and JP version, but both don't have it so where is it at is it something to do with Saju Nohana I don't know because usually when it comes to the anniversaries right they always get the voice actors to do a performance right so for uh, for example last year Saiki no Uta was by Sayori Hayami and Fortia or Fortia was by Maya Uchida and then of course the year before that Vesta was Inori Minase of course and third anniversary Justicia was uh, Sayuri Hayami again so usually for the anniversaries they do get the voice actors but is it, but is it because of Saju no Hana they can't upload it onto their channels I don't know but I, I wish if it is I wish they were able to put it up on their YouTube channel because it would be better personally in my personal opinion I would appreciate it way more if it was on their YouTube channel rather than on Saju no Hana's channel I don't even think it's on Saju no Hana's channel somebody can let me know in the comments if it is or not um but i think that's also something that they're very much lacking on is selling it on youtube as well as on twitter or spotify i think that's something that they're missing out on entirely i don't know what's happening on that front and generally as well i feel like you know marketing wise i don't feel like there's been as much push for it as usual as it is usually i feel like usually we have something going on there's always you know something happening they're always promoting it and everything but this time around it doesn't feel that way uh i don't know if it's just them taking a uh, taking a step back and you know you know putting it putting more money into the advertising costs and stuff i don't know but it feels like it's a lot less out there as in uh, unlike how it normally is um, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they'll ramp it up for part two and part three. Who knows? Again, this is very early days to say something like this because it is only part one. Part two and part three is where usually is they're trying to generate as much hype as possible because at that point, a lot more of the anniversary is available, right, as well. So a lot more people will be interested in coming into the game and everything, but we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, those are my thoughts on part one, I would say. is Part one, overall, solid but I think there could be some improvements on, you know, potentially the marketing side of things. The the They could have probably added a new gameplay mechanic, even if it was something like Hero Ascension for Assist. Honestly, 
I'm not gonna lie, maybe some people will be annoyed with me saying this, but Hero Ascension for assists would have been something else, honestly. I mean, it would have been a way for them to get more money as well from players because, you know, getting more Iris, uh, Hero Light bundles to sell, right? It would have been a great way to generate revenue for them, but it's something like that. Something like that could have been introduced and it would have been very, very interesting, right? Um, or something new with even assists, right? Maybe active skills or something like that. You know, how like Dokkan has an active skill where you can, you know, flick up and potentially, uh, you know, cer a certain skill activates, like for three turns or something, or it deals a certain amount of damage uh, to the enemy or something like that, right? It would have been very, very cool. Very, very interesting. Unfortunately, it's not happened at this point in time. We'll have to wait and see what they do in part two and part three. Now, my expectations from part two and part three of the sixth anniversary. What do I think is going to happen? Now, like I said earlier on in the video, um, obviously during the interview with uh, Omori Sensei and the Don Mimo development team, both of them, both sides of the coin, Omori Sensei and the Don Mimo development team, confirmed that part one of the celebration was only the beginning and that, you know, the story side of things at least, um, they directly adapted the source material with no changes. They wanted to keep it as close to the uh, original as possible with obviously some slight changes to accommodate for like the costume outfit wearing and all that jazz. And of course, accommodate for the fact that, you know, this Sword of Rotoria 12 takes place at a time where we know about Astraea Record. Of course, the original SO12 released before Astraea Record came out on Don Mimo. So, of course, accommodating for that as well was great. Um, and it was very, very interesting to see, of course, right? But... Obviously, there were not that many changes. So part two and part three having further changes and potentially having major, major uh, additions, I would say. More so than changes, additions. I think having more additions is going to be very, very interesting. Um, of course, I expect to see more fight sequences, of course, right? Because I feel like when it comes to the light novel, while it was great, it did lack a little bit on the fight scene side of things. I felt it was a little bit short in that regards. Um, but I do believe that I think we will see a lot more fight scenes, a lot of perspectives, different perspectives in the Don Mimo iteration versus the um, light novel iter iteration. So we'll have to wait and see on that front. Furthermore, from part two and part three, I am expecting more uh, of the norm ranking events, login bonuses and everything. I think we will get those things for sure. No doubt about it, of course, right? Um, I am hoping for things like Familiar Grand Battle to potentially come back. I enjoyed it personally. I know a lot of people didn't like it because of how one-sided it could be and how much, uh, you know, how it benefited people who just kept running and trialing things out which to me personally i mean that's just how gacha games are you keep testing you keep trying and you get to, you get your best team out of it basically right um a lot of people are clowning other people for trying to do a lot of runs and stuff which really are we really going that low let people enjoy the game if they are enjoying the game and if they are enjoying you know testing teams out and trying to get as much of a higher score as possible and they have the time to do so let them. Who are you to judge how they spend their time? If they're enjoying spending their time on Don Mimo 24-7, let them enjoy it, right? I think that's one of the issues I feel I have with the community as well. And I'm going, I'm getting sidetracked a little bit here. But I feel like a lot of the community just rags on people who enjoy the game. And as a result, you're just pushing people away from the community. Stop doing that. Let's be real. Let people enjoy how they want to enjoy the game. And you are in no position to dictate how other people enjoy the game. So stop it. All right. That's that's my only thing I wanted to add regarding the community in, in this video. I don't want to go expand further here. Of course, it, uh, it, it otherwise we'll just get into a whole nother mess, of course. Right. Um, Because there are so many things to talk about. I could literally make it like an iceberg video out of it, to be quite honest. So, some of the things that I know and I've heard about the community and I only know the surface as well. It's insane. It is genuinely, genuinely insane. But either way, um, you know, I still want to see it happen because it's something different. It's something unique. And if they make changes to it and bring it into the game again, I'm all for it. I'm absolutely all for it. I hope to see it in part three, potentially. I also expect to see Grand War or Final Trial come back for part three as well. Of course, these are the stages that are high difficulty stages, um, challenge you in, in a way like no other, basically. So I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to that as well, if we do get it, of course, right? And overall, I'm just hoping for maybe something a little bit different in terms of the mechanics for these units. Of course, I expect to get a Hero Festa in part three as well potentially our first hero festa assist as well which would be fantastic 
because that'll be something new and fresh even though it does make you have to summon on that banner it's not like you weren't gonna summon on a hero festa banner anyway anyways right so for me personally i'm very much looking forward to that as well right i'm very much looking forward to that as well now I want to talk a little bit about what's going to happen after the sixth anniversary because I see a lot of people having misconceptions on what's going to happen after the sixth anniversary. A lot of people are maybe jokingly, maybe being serious about it. A lot of people are saying like, oh, after the sixth anniversary, Danmimo is going to be a dead game. Nobody's going to play it. And it's possible that a lot of people do quit. I mean, it's absolutely fair that people, you know, don't want to stick with a game that doesn't release any new story content, especially if they're in it for the story only, right? Um, but if you are a new player, you want to kind of stick around, to be quite honest, because they are going to be re rerunning every single anniversary. They have confirmed that every single anniversary will rerun. And then furthermore, on top of that, they will also be releasing new units still, Keep that in mind. New units will still be releasing. There will still be ranking and familiar events. So PvP like War Games and Telskiru Abyss along with Record Buster will still be refreshing along with familiar events. They will still be coming out. And then furthermore, on top of that, we are still going to get campaigns. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get like the EU Asia campaign again, um, maybe next year before the game uh, officially shuts down. Because I still do believe because they're slowing down in terms of content and everything and they're stopping the story content and everything. I do believe that after the next fiscal year or after the uh, after this fiscal year ends and at the start of the next fiscal year, so this is a April or May, we will probably see the game getting announced as, uh, you know, it's reaching its end of service one month to play. After that, it'll shut down or whatever. We'll take the servers offline or we'll make an offline version of the game. I don't know what will happen, but something like that will happen probably, right? Um, but I expect maybe the US anniversary to be celebrated as well before the game ends as well. So we'll get campaigns like that and everything and we'll still get new units, right? We will still get new units. We're going to get the reruns of the anniversary and we are getting campaigns. So let's get that straight. The game isn't going to die right the game isn't going to die are we going to lose players yes but i think even they've acknowledged that fact they've said it multiple times that the game isn't dying we are supporting the game all we're doing is we're just not releasing any new story content but we will be releasing new units we will be releasing campaigns we will be releasing events and so on and so forth like I said, I understand why there may be some people who will want to stop playing the game because, you know, there's no new story content and everything. And on top of that, remember that at the end of this anniversary, we are also getting the release of Danmachi Battle Chronicle. In fact, I think a week or two after part three begins, um, we will be getting Danmachi Battle Chronicle. So a lot of people will be focused on that as well, right, potentially. So obviously uh a lot of people are going to be uh you know maybe shifting towards danmachi battle chronicle but of course there will be people who will also want to stick with this game until the new danmachi game comes out the other danmachi game as well so yeah i mean that is a misconception i really wanted to clear up and talk about because they've reiterated it multiple times they said it for the first time in their original letter where they said that you know there was not going to be any story content or anything they said it on the anniversary live stream they said it once again during the skill live stream as well during the skills live stream that they had to double confirm that you know the game was still going to continue on they said it in the original live stream right after they made that original announcement as well they've said it four times in a live stream basically i swear down and then furthermore in the recent interview with amori sensei and the danmyo development team they even confirmed that that was going to be the case where there was going to be new units new events new campaigns but no new story content that was it so I wanted to get that cl uh, cleared up and clarified for you guys more so than anything else so that you guys could get an idea on how exactly Danmimo is going to operate after the 6th anniversary. Now of course, they, the, with them not releasing any new story content and ha not having to pay for any VAs or anything thankfully, um, that means the costs of the game go, games go down. Uh, the costs of the game goes down and as a result even if they lose players we will probably still see a good amount of revenue going towards the game so keep that in mind as well and of course i understand if people don't want to spend on the game after this i would obviously say honestly i would say just don't spend on any gacha game because it is a trap it is a very very big trap uh but of course if you want to support the developers and you want to buy a pack here or there it's absolutely up to you it depends on your income and everything but yeah because i keep getting questions on whether or not it's worth spending on the game and honestly it just comes down to you and who you are as a person 
maybe you are very free with your money and you are very happy to support a developer or support a game right and obviously with Danmimo having provided six years of good content in my personal opinion i feel like it's absolutely worth supporting the developers right with what they've done in the last couple of years but i also understand if people are on the other side you know who are very frugal with their money are not willing to spend money if necessary there's no reason for you to absolutely spend money. There is absolutely no reason for you to spend money unless you want to. So keep that in mind. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit more relaxing, a little bit more chilled out. And of course, a little bit different. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want me to do something like this, maybe if you guys... Actually, you know what? All A new idea all of a sudden. Leave any questions you have regarding, uh, you know, Don Mimo for me, maybe from the last six years. And maybe I'll do a small Q&A session, potentially. Uh, of course, I'm gonna probably make it its own video or something, maybe in the down the line. But I might make a Q&A video in the future where I answer your questions. And of course, maybe today I'll use it as a platform. Maybe I'll leave a comment. And if I put a comment in the underneath this video saying, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. They can be Don Mimo, personal questions, whatever it may be and i'll answer them so leave it in the comment section down below uh, again thank you guys so much for watching this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys next time take it easy everybody Bye bye